Let's talk about um, financing when you're using investor money. Okay, so this is not your own money, it's not your own deposit. You're looking to get someone else, maybe not a non family member, just a partner, a partnership to fund a purchase of a property, a development of a property. How does that work? Because I've seen a lot of information around on YouTube about finding partners and finding investors, but how does the financing side of it and things work? Um, it's an interesting topic because a lot of people are a little bit sort of loose around this and I thought, well, investigate a little bit more. So I'll catch you on the video. Hi everybody, it's Pioneer here from Niche Advice. Right, so I've seen quite a number of videos on YouTube uh, where um, they're essentially telling people, look, if you don't have the money, why don't you go and find someone who's going to fund uh, a purchase of a deal or a development of a deal, okay? Um, and I've always been a bit intrigued by this because personally, and, and cards on the table, whenever I've been approached by a client who doesn't have their own money, don't get me wrong, it's not gifted deposit from family members, they're all okay, okay? I'm talking about a loan, I'm talking about a business relationship behind the scenes. So it's not gifted deposits, this is, I'm gonna buy a property for 300,000 pounds, and guess what, I'm gonna get a 100,000 pounds loan from X, Y person, okay? And it's not a gift, right? So. I've seen quite a lot of information on this and I, I for one have not done a deal to date where someone has said I don't have my own money okay I just think especially and I will explain why and I'll tell you what the pitfalls are around this and then we'll talk about what are the options really if you do want to do that so um, in terms of my own experience um, you can't get that on a mortgage okay so you can't get a traditional mortgage by using someone else's money if they're not going to go on the property okay so they're not going to buy it as a joint mortgage with you you're just getting a loan um, the traditional way people have done that obviously is buy a property maybe get a gifted deposit from mother father brother sister close family relations there are a few lenders that will do that with distance relations uh, relationships on a buy to let purpose so that's how the type of business that I've been writing, okay, I've been a lot more comfortable with that situation because there is a link, there is a bond, you know the relationship, and then obviously it's just figuring out the source of funds and how that's come in and, you know, doing all the money laundering things that need to be done. Um, but there is a trend, and I call them YouTube property people, but there is a trend where this is happening. So just because I'm not writing it, um, it is certainly out there, and there's a lot of information out there about how this can be done. So... Traditional mortgage is not the route. So generally what happens is uh, you have to opt to go for a bridging finance for this, okay? So I then, I thought, okay, well, the bridging finance, I haven't done this myself, but let me send an email out to, I don't know, six, seven of the bridging lenders that I deal with to see if they will do this type of deal. And if they will, if they do, what are the conditions around it? And it was really interesting because out of the ones that I sent, a, a number of them came back and said, no, we, we want basically the client to have some skin in the game. If they're using someone else's money, they're buying a property, what happens if things go wrong? And that's what's been my theory, and that's why I've shied away from writing that business, okay? Because I think, you know, um, what happens if things go wrong? And often, you know, things do go wrong with property development. So what, what happens in that? And if someone else is responsible, what happens? So hence, I've never been too keen on writing that type of business. But there were a number of lenders that came back and said, yes, we're happy with this situation. As long as everything's disclosed to us right at the front, we need to know what the relationship is. Is there a loan arrangement, for example, for six months or 12 months? Is there a um, interest on that loan? What is the repayment guidelines of that loan? Is there going to be charges on that? And obviously both sets of solicitors need to be involved with this and it needs to be legally done. So that's point one. Point one is obviously it needs to go through the solicitors because they, the person who's giving you this money has to protect their own interest as well. So what happens if there is a delay? What happens? Is there any penalties? Um, what happens if the project doesn't come about? Um, what happens if there's problems with refinancing so forth? So what I would say is generally it's got to go through the solicitors and it is possible. So it is being done, obviously. Okay. And it's going down the bridging uh, route. What I would say is the more um, the, let's say the better priced bridging lenders tend not to do it 
okay um, but there are a number I mean bridging there are hundreds of bridging lenders out there and um, there's certainly a viable way of doing this now this brings me to my next point my next point is look if you are going to risk other people's money you really need to have had a lot of experience in doing these type of projects turning them around you can't watch five YouTube videos and then think right okay well I know some rich people and I know some people that have just got 50, 50 grand sitting there in the bank and they're not doing anything with it I can go and approach them and say you know let's find the property let's do it up and let's turn it around but I would if, if you were someone who approached me I would want to know all the ins and outs of it and certainly if you approach me from a financing side I would like you to point me to the two or three projects that you've done that you've got out so basically you got your bridging finance you did the deal and you've now sold it or refinanced it and you can point to them okay because unfortunately um, with this day and age uh, people are getting into bridging finance by not knowing all the facts and certainly not having the experience of going through a bridging route just because someone is giving you an agreement in principle just because someone is giving you an offer that really doesn't mean anything in bridging terms because everything has to be to do with when it goes into underwritings and when the valuation money is taken when proper underwriting is done and certainly at legal stage a lot of the things fall out in bridging at legal stage so um, don't be uh, you know fooled in terms of, of, a, of an agreement in principle with a rate on there okay they can pretty much give you that straight away it's about the ins and outs and when you're talking about these type of deals it's all about the exit how are you going to exit and if you are going to exit that if that does that story match up with your current circumstances if you are a first-time buyer first-time landlord and now you want to do this your options are limited so do you know about your options do you know how they how how they've impacted you if you've got a low income job and now you want to refinance into a buy to let do you know about those rules do you know about the three months rule the six months rule the bridging rule do you, the back to back rule the capital raising rule so say you buy a property do you know about the delays with um, land registry if you're looking to do that do you, you know you need to know with lenders that will probably work off a different way so there are lots of things that only experienced people now there's only so much a a finance broker that, that can tell you this stuff and um, i think you need a team around you you need a solicitor who's going to be honest with you from the front and you need to work with them you certainly need to get a surveyor on board whereby you get the property surveyed beforehand and um, you need a, a the, obviously the solicitor to be aware of this arrangement that you've got with your funders so all of those things will have an impact on one which lender you approach two which lender you exit out of and certainly um, how the deal is done and um, I'll tell you what else I haven't been keen on doing uh, uh, lately uh, or you know when it comes to bridging finance and that's people that say I don't have the money to do up the property I'm gonna buy the property and then I want to get some more money to do it up um, again it's just a preference it's best for you to limit yourself to what you've got certainly live within your means in terms of who you're trying to do a, a deal um, simply because if things go wrong at least it's your money and at least you've budgeted for it and then you have got a backup plan if you need to ask for some more money but I think the projects generally need to be viable for yourself for your own strategy anyway let me know what you think I may be wrong there are lots of brokers that will obviously take your business for it and they will say no and I suppose that's my point and um, there's a reason why we say no sometimes and that's because we've seen uh, you know I get calls from people that are stuck in bridging finance they can't get out of it they are stuck halfway through projects because material costs have gone up and their builders left them they are stuck um, in terms of you know refinancing because they didn't quite they were not quite uh, told about the lending criteria on the buy to let side of things and what they need to get out they did not research their own circumstances for example to credit credit score and credit profile so all of those things have a bearing into what we do at the end of the day we're here to give you guidance and information but uh, you need to really think about a business plan you've got to treat this as a business and the viability of that business has to be some risk assessments in there anyway guys i'll catch you on the next one and uh, yeah i hope you've enjoyed it the content of this video does not constitute giving advice it's purely for information purposes all cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker 
As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.